here at the Geneva Motor Show where it is busy and it is noisy, but it is totally worth it because we're about to show you something extremely special and to give the exclusive on what the price will be in the UK. We are, of course, talking about the all-new Dacia Spring, which is a far cry from its extremely basic cousin that Jack reviewed just a few years ago. And that's all thanks to its brand new platform and extremely appealing price point. Maybe this is the electric vehicle that genuinely launches us, springs us into a new era of EVs. Like fully charged? Then you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric Expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go free on the first day. Now, I am going to hold on to my notes, in part because it is busy here and it's a good sort of bat people out of the way. But let's start with the price because let's be real, that is the reason that you're watching this video. And I am extremely pleased to tell you that this will be the cheapest EV available on the market in the UK and across Europe. And it is gonna be 15,000 pounds. You can pre-order them from March 2024 and they'll be arriving in the UK from October. Now this isn't just gonna be the cheapest EV, I also believe it's going to be one of the best value for money EVs. And what I mean by that is that it does the job, it does it well, and it throws in a couple of surprise and delights along the way. But who is this actually interesting for? Who is £15,000 good value for? When you think about things like company car schemes, lease schemes, which would put it at like £100 a month, or perhaps you're even going to wait three years, at which point, accounting for depreciation, we're talking under £8,000 of that bit. And just to put this into context, you know, £15,000, that would get you a four-year-old Nissan Leaf. It would get you 60% of an MG4. So to really, really frame that in context. But at that price point, I'm sure you're thinking, well, presumably this is the EasyJet, the whiz air of EVs. But actually, let me tell you, there are a few things that make this particularly special. And that is because this sits on a brand new EV architecture. Why is that significant? Well, so many EVs to date have been built on existing architectures designed and perfected really for petrol and diesel vehicles. And that's a little bit like thinking about taking an existing house and trying to knock down walls, perhaps do a loft extension in order to make it work for you and your family. And whilst that will be pretty good, to really get that perfect Barbie dream house, building from scratch would be the preference. But like building from scratch is much more expensive, the same is true of developing a new EV car architecture. So when a car company does it, it's saying we are investing in EVs, we believe that they're the future, and we're also so committed to developing a vehicle that is totally fit for purpose. So that's what we're going to be checking when we take a little look around this one. So at £15,000, of course, this thing is pretty diddy. Um, and in fact, it's 3.7 metres long, which makes it 7 centimetres longer than the Fiat 500. But that's quite deceptive because when you look at it, it's obviously got quite an aggressive and confident and robust stance. And of course, that's total marketing spiel that I've lifted from the press material. But I have to say, I kind of agree with it because when you look at small cars, which we so desperately need to take up less room on our roads, they are small and cute and bug-eyed and sweet. And actually, you don't always want that. And especially when you don't want this to be a gimmick, it needs to be taken seriously. You want to be let out at those junctions after all. So I think it's very sensible that this is a small car, but dressed up in SUV clothing, the perfect kind of antidote or the thing to get us off our addiction to SUVs. But the coolest thing is that this has a wall-to-wall -wall turning circle of 4.8 meters. Now you might not think that's a particularly exciting stat, but if you live on a very, very narrow street where it is a real bun fight to get parking, then that is incredibly exciting. Say goodbye to 17 point turns or stressful parking where you end up parking 15 minutes from your home because you haven't found a parking space that you can adequately get into. This totally changes that. Um, so that is extremely cool. And part of that is enabled by the fact that the wheels are right, right at the edge. You've got teeny tiny overhangs and wheels that really sit at the, at the edges. That allows you to get that amazing turning circle, um, but it also means that it's probably gonna maximize the space within the cabin, which which we'll come on to in a little moment. Now, 
everything about this car has changed with the exception of this one panel. That is the only thing that keeps it in common with the previous iteration of the Data Spring. Everything else has been really reimagined and recrafted. Now, we spoke about the fact that this is going to be incredibly easy to park and maneuver within tight city spaces, uh, particularly if parking is a bit of a challenge. And as such, there are some things that help make it really durable. So these wheels, these caps actually remove, they can be easily replaced. Super, super important, you're not going to get super precious about scuffing those wheels in those very, very dense urban centres. Um, there's also these panels like this, which again helps for bumps, especially if people are opening doors and, and opening them into yours. Again, those can be really, really easily replaced. Super important things when, if you are living in a place where you don't have access to off-road parking, you don't want to be constantly worried about your car getting knocked. And in this instance, you don't need to be worried. Moving round to the front and you can see that there is a brand new sort of identity signature at the front. These aren't lights, they are purely decorative, but I think it looks all right. Actually kind of like, um, maybe like a wrestler's belt. Maybe that's just me. Uh, but here at the lights they have, you know, they sort of look like a rocket ship on its side. I think it's, you know, it's pretty neat. It has been, there's definitely been some thought gone into that. Um, there are loads of opportunities for a bit of personalization, including these sort of decals or stickers. This one here sort of looks like a bird's eye view of a city, maybe some tire tracks, I'm not sure. Um, but you can swap those out and sort of adapt them as you, as you see fit. Um, there are a range of different colors. Actually, this one here is brick red. There's also beige safari. Real kind of fire and bull colours there. Let's talk about charging because these numbers are not going to blow your socks off. Uh, we're talking 7 kilowatt AC charging, 20 to 100 percent in four hours, or 30 kilowatt DC charging, which will give you 20 to 80 percent in 45 minutes. But according to Dacia, they found that actually a lot of their customers, 75% of the time, they're charging from home anyway. So this is very much a charging little and often either at home, on the street, or at your place of work. Destination charging it definitely is key here. And it also doesn't have a particularly big battery. We're talking 26.8 kilowatt hours, which to put that into perspective, the Vauxhall Corsa E has something like a 50 kilowatt hour battery giving 180 miles of range. Uh, typically, electric vehicles would have something like a 70 kilowatt hour battery. So 26.8 kilowatt hours is giving 137 miles of range which is super, super efficient. And part of that is achieved by the fact that this is so lightweight. This is one of the only EVs, I think it's the only EV, certainly that will be available in the UK, that will sit under the one tonne mark. It's at 984 kilos. Um, so that gives you something like a 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, if you're thinking 137 miles, ooh, is that going to be enough? Well, Dacia have the evidence. They've done the data. They've seen that actually the average Dacia Spring customer drives 23 miles a day at 23 miles per hour. So yes, 137 miles is absolutely fine. Um, and sure, it might not do your massive, massive long road trips that you do once every six months, but it is going to do everything that you need it to do 95% of the time. And in those other instances, rent something. So moving around to the rear, and you can see that we've got Dacia emblazoned on the back. Now get used to that because I think this is going to be an exceptionally popular car, so you're going to be reading that a lot when you drive along the motorway or around your city. Um, we've got a similar sort of lighting signature to that we did to the front, except this time we've got rocket ships going pointing outwards rather than rocket ships pointing inwards. Um, or certainly that's what I think they look like. More opportunities for you know customising this yourself. Again, you can swap and play around with as you see fit. Now, boot opens with this little button here. The boot space is really class leading, that's 308 litres. Now to put that into context, the Vauxhall Corsa E, that's like 267 litres. So not masses, but totally fine. You could fit in sort of three carry-on suitcases. You could definitely do your big shop. Uh, you could get a big suitcase. And when you fold the seats down, you get 1,004 litres. So again, totally, absolutely adequate for what you need. There is also a false floor, uh, so more space under there as well. talk about power because again these numbers aren't going to make you weak at the knees or particularly goody. There is 33 kilowatts and there's 48 kilowatts which in old money is 45 horsepower and 65 horsepower. So that means a 0 to 62 miles per hour in 14 seconds. So definitely more get around than get away car. 
And the other thing that I should tell you is that this has vehicle to load, which means that you can plug various appliances into. So what is there to say about the interior? Well, the basic things are done well, exactly as sort of is true to the Dacia brand, and there are a few kind of nice surprises and delights. Um, so first of all, you know, there is a, a white roof and there are white features on some of the important things that you use, so your, your tray at the front and your door panels, and that has the effect of trying to make this space feel bigger. It obviously has to be clever. This is a small and quite narrow car, so it has to sort of find the illusion of space where possible. Um, things like there isn't sort of an elbow rest, which again makes you feel that you have that sort of slightly wider, wider feel. Um, so whilst the sort of materials are totally adequate, they are totally fine, um, there are some things that make this feel a little bit higher quality. So for example, there is this 10 inch screen, which is compatible with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you can get, you know, your Spotify and everything that you need to make this feel like a familiar car. But at the same time, there are these really nice physical buttons and it is always so nice to see physical buttons. And these ones, they don't feel cheap. They don't feel like a 17,000 pound car. They actually feel pretty high quality. They even have these nice textures which help give it that sense of quality. And I always think it's quite important actually where you have these physical buttons because say you have a passenger here you've said oh you know they're starting to fiddle with things if they can do it here rather than going into the screen that's infinitely less distracting for the driver so big 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 fan of these lovely physical buttons um, now if you saw the uh, review that Jack did a couple of years ago he commented on the fact that there were a load of fake buttons so clearly the wheel was a carryover part from a different vehicle as a cost-saving thing and loads of the buttons were there but they actually did absolutely nothing that is not true with this vehicle there are of course still many 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 buttons but each of these relate to a range of different ADAS features or uh, features within you know the infotainment system and that means that this car is actually way more sophisticated than its £15,000 price tag would give it credit for. And especially, say you were, you have a teenager at home who's starting to drive, I think that sort of assurance that this is a basic car but comes equipped with all of those safety features, that would give you a lot of confidence if you have a 17-year-old going out on the road for the first time. We are in the back seat. This is not the Jack back seat test. He is six foot five, I am five foot three, so radically different experience. I think he would have a tough time getting into the back of this vehicle. But if he was in the back of this vehicle, how often would he be doing that? It would probably because he's been given, given a lift by a friend. It would be very rare that someone of that size is in the back of this car. The more likely situation is that you're ferrying children around to school. Interestingly, there are only two seats, not three, and that means that you can get the much, much narrower vehicle that this is. It can be smaller and lighter and all those good things. There isn't a tremendous amount of storage. Uh, there are just these sort of rear um, seat pockets, which again I think is fine because otherwise have loads of storage, have loads of little people, you find things tucked away in all sorts of nooks and crannies. This at least keeps it simple and tidy. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. So, there you have it. The brand new era of electric vehicles is here. And this little pocket rocket is leading the charge, all powered, all thanks to a brand new electric platform. Let us know what you think in the comments and please do like and subscribe. And if you have been, thanks for watching.